Hello everyone and welcome to episode 28 of We Happy Few. It is happening, I'm very excited to see what we're going to talk with Arthur on the playground. <sighs> Although I can tell you he will probably go and get us cod liver oil, but I am very excited how this conversation will be going, because we haven't seen this one yet. Oh, hey Arthur. I'm sorry. For the past 14 years, I've sort of thought about what I'd say if I ever ran into you again. But being a complete jealous ass about the general was not really part of the plan. Sir Robert's a client. Oh, good. I, I mean... <laughs> I don't go around having sex with all my clients. No, no. Uh, of course not. I just... I could ask him. He likes to feel important. Even after all those awful things I said? We used to be Arthur and Sally. The two musketeers. Remember? Did you really come here just to offer me a letter of transit? Or did you want something? I thought we could help each other. All right. What do you want? I used to know I could trust you about anything. Of course you can trust me. What is it you want? It's going to sound stupid, but... A bottle of cod liver oil. A bottle of cod liver oil? Like your mum used to torment you with. What if I told you it was sort of a souvenir? Why on earth would you want to remember your mum? I don't know. I keep hoping I'll remember something that'll make it all better. Like maybe it was an accident and she didn't mean to poison the soup. You know how joy fucks up your memories. Look, if it's too much to ask... I suppose it would be too much to expect. Don't worry, Arthur. I will ask my friend the General for a rotten scrap of paper just for old time's sake. Look, it's not exactly a souvenir. Things have got a little more complicated than usual. I'm sorry I fucked everything up. I wanted to die, you know. I thought about it. But I couldn't. Not after... After what your mum did? What my mum did. <sighs> Look, I'll get it for you. The cod liver oil. I missed you so. I'm sorry. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I'll, I'll, I'll get you that letter. I have to go. I'm sorry. I really, really. It just, I'll just came out. Go. Get you that bottle. Meet you back here sometime. I'll let you know when I've got it. I guess I've got to see the general now. Won't that be fun? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't understand this. I don't understand why they made it that way. No, I don't understand it. There's like... There was nothing wrong with the first conversation. I mean, everything that changed right now is that it made Sally look a little bit better and more understandable. Something like that, because in the first, in the, when when this happened on in Arthur's view in Sally's home, she was so weird. I mean, she just came out. She, she I don't know. She just no. She just acted like I don't know. No, she was acting weird, and I didn't like her then either. Because I don't know. Because she just assumed that Ar that Arthur just came here just for for her too, or any or something. No, because comparing those two conversations is totally different, because she she actually apologized for what she did now, which I welcome, and she opened up to Arthur. I mean, she could have still, because, I mean, he told her, and I guess she does trust him. I don't understand. I guess, yeah, I, I can't blame her for not telling Arthur that, that she has a child. Still, I really don't get it, and I don't know where to start. I still like the game. It is it is a really nice story, but I just don't understand why they chose this um, approach. 
why they just made a totally why they just again made a totally different conversation so i don't know i i don't know i think i <sighs> I get it that Sally probably has issues in opening up to Arthur about about having a child, about having Gwen to care for, but I don't know. I think it was a good thing that um, that in this conversation, because I don't think that it happened in the other one, um, is that Sally said that it was more than a souvenir, that things got more complicated or anything, but I think she could have just, I don't know, she said that it was for a potion or something or that she was sick or whatever but I don't know no because in the first conversation she just came off as I don't know was so selfish to ask Arthur for cod liver oil just because it remember it reminds her of her mother did so much to making Sally unlikable and now it's gotten a little bit better but I think I don't know, it seems to me that they just changed all those scenes up, so Sally doesn't seem so unlikable anymore. Okay, so let's just read her diary. Why did I do that? It was nice. Why didn't I ever do it before? Because look at what happens. I fuck everything up. Think, think Sally, think. Funny thing, I was scrambling for a lie to tell him about the cod liver oil and I wind up telling him something I wouldn't ever tell anybody else ever. How it is, how it is that I don't see him for 14 years and a minute later I'm telling my deepest darkest secrets. Except for the one big thing. I didn't tell him about Gwen. He's still so mad. If he brings me the cod liver oil then maybe I can trust him about everything else. Can I? I wish the only person I know who can give me a letter of transit wasn't a bloody general. Won't that be fun? Also, another thing is, she's if she's so good friends or whatever she is with the general, I don't know. Drug buddies. Why can't she ask the general to get the cod liver oil for her? I mean, if she's drugging him up anyway so he doesn't remember anything, then why can't she just tell him some stupid lie that she needs it for a new drug or anything that he gets her cod liver oil? I mean, I suppose he could get it even from Verloc himself. Because I suppose he's a little bit higher up than him. The only thing I'm really mad about, or... I don't know if it's mad is the right word, but... Irritated, basically, is this whole switching up conversations with Arthur. It's not Sally who runs after Arthur all the time, it's it's Arthur who did, ev who did everything for Sally and I don't know. No. I, I really don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. There's so much going on in my mind right now and I can't put it into words. But I guess it, this whole thing that Sally is made more likable in these conversations or more honest or deeper than she seemed in Arthur's view is probably the best explanation. I don't know. So what else can we get with 40 points? Unlock for advanced drug recipes. Okay, yeah, why not? Yield of some craft, the drugs doubled. Yes, please. Probably that's a good thing too. Okay. <sighs> so, what are we going to do? Visit the Victory Memorial Camp. So this is really where the general stays? I thought that this was some, I don't know, old camp that was just inhabited by those old soldier guys and the, the general's office is... An old office of his that he never uses anymore. But okay. Well, we broke into that before. Lovely to see you, Miss Boyle. Nice to see you, Miss Boyle. Hello, boys. Keeping us safe. Next war can't come soon enough, if you ask me, Miss. Hope the Jerry's come before my knees go, ma'am. I'll let the Jerry's know you miss them. Oh well. The last time we were here, you everyone was asleep. General, you know. I hope the general's not in one of his old oh, poor me moons. It's such a chore dragging him out of them. If he's cheery, I bet he'll give me the letter of transit without a blink. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? It's Sally Boyle. I'm not a German infiltrator. Please don't ambush me. Where are they? Miss Boyle, we weren't expecting you. Harry, why the fuck is the gate open? Excuse my French, ma'am. I told you to close it. 
No, Sergeant, you didn't. You said you were going to close it, but you had to go to the loo first. No, I didn't. I said I'm going to the loo. Why don't you close the gate? Boys? Boys, you can close it now if you like. Right, Harry. Close the gate, if you please, whilst I accompany Miss Boyle to the General's office. Miss Boyle! I oh, won't he be happy to see you? He's trying to fix the boat again. The one in the warehouse? You mean the one in the boathouse, as is, Mom? They've moved the boat to the water. And he's got Hardy patching it up. Hardy don't hardly know which end of a boat goes in the water. If you don't think Hardy's up to it, find me someone who does know boats. Sally! Suppose you drift away, sir. How are we going to fetch you? What an unexpected pleasure. Army officers ought not to be pottering about in boats, sir. I realise you must be out of rainbow. You haven't been round in weeks. Wasn't I around just a few days ago? Damn it. Oh, and a friend of mine left the parade without his letter of transit. Now he can't go back to work. Isn't that silly? Any friend of yours, my dear. It's been too long, anyway. Oddest thing, last time I was there, I could swear I heard something that sounded like a cat. But I haven't seen a cat since the war. Have you? Fortunately, I wrote myself a note. Sally's got a... baby. <laughs> what do you suppose that means? Who knows? Once you hallucinated that you were back in India and you kept saying, but I don't want to shoot some poor bastard's elephant. <laughs> <laughs> You're as clever a liar as I am. <laughs> you can lie with the truth. Your cruel's a toy with me, General. It's Dr. Velox, baby. Isn't it? No wonder you never told him. God knows what he'd do to a baby. You might have told me. She's not your bloody baby. So what do you care? Do you remember the children born after the war? We got some of them out, but... They made everyone so unhappy. Can... can you get us out? I might be able to get her out, if I'm very clever, but... No. I can't spare you. What do you think would happen if our beloved Bobbies ran out of Blackberry Joy? I have a safe house. Remember that abandoned building where you threw me that masquerade ball last year? I've cleaned it up a bit. Bring her there. I'm not sending her away. Why not? It's traditional, a single girl in trouble, not equipped to take care of her baby. I'd have thought you'd be grateful. You'll end up in one of Dr. Verloc's glass cells, and even I won't be able to save you. You don't know what it's like to be alone, do you? A girl like you never is. <laughs> I think you know the way out. All right. I've got the bloody letter of transit. Arthur said he'd let me know when he had the cod liver oil. Oh, I hope he sent me something on the blower. Wait. If the General's got the boat in the boathouse, if I can get it working, maybe I can get us out of here. Oh wow, that was intense. The general is so scary. Uh, he really... Whoa, there's some soldiers who have to plague out here too? Whoa! Oh, the bog. Maybe there's some more histoplasm in there.
Yes, that's very good. I need it. <sighs> I don't know. So... Oof. That was so scary. The general was really scary. The general is really, really scary. He's so creepy. I understand why Sally doesn't want to make him mad. Yeah, we need to make our escape soon. So I suppose we're not um, very far away from leaving as Arthur like Arthur is. Um, we're very close, I suppose. We just need our baby carrier thing and then we need to <sighs> fix this boat, I guess. Wow. The general's Bristol pilot. Wow. If I could steal a boat, it doesn't work. Miss Boyle, how lovely to see you. You got the boat in the water. Well, over the water anyway. It don't leak quite as much anymore. Thing is, the motor don't turn. I mean, forget starting it. The old man's got the only key. I can't even turn it with a wrench. Rusted solid. I'd have to take it apart, but I think I'd never get it back together again. You know a lot about boats. And you're the only one fixing it up? Ma'am... I'm a joiner. If you need a door hung, I'm your man. Apparently, that makes me the general's expert on boats. My dad and I patched up a Bristol pilot when I was a girl. Is that what sort of boat it is? Did about 20 leagues, but it wasn't really white water. So we sold it for a twin diesel schooner. Of course, the Navy requisitioned that for lake patrols. We tried to patch up a Q-boat during the occupation, but we couldn't find a ramjet. I'm not an expert. Would you happen to know how to fix the motor? Well, if it's rusted solid, maybe Dr. Faraday would make a new one for me. You know Dr. Faraday? If the likes of me asked her, she'd probably zap me with one of her satanic devices. All right, but don't tell the general. No, ma'am. It'll be our little secret. Won't the general be surprised? Okay. So Sally's going to see Dr. Faraday too. Oh wow, so the quest is leave the boathouse, so I suppose something will happen if I walk out of there. Well, Gwen? No. We may just make it out of here alive after all. Uh, oh wait, did I you want to get say Dr. Something? Faraday to make a new boat motor for me? Then I lied my ass off to Hardy. I've never been near a boat. So I'll need to find someone who can tell me how to drive one. And I guess I'll need to steal the general's key to the boat. All right. First things first. Who can tell me about boats? Hmm. Wait. Ah, oh, the air raid shelter. Arthur and I snuck in there once. And then we walked the rail tunnels all the way back to Maiden Home. I should go down there and make sure the hatch door is still open. Never hurts to have an escape hatch. Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't Arthur be pleased if he'd come up with that? So we need to get in there again. Oh, great. So, what's there to read? The kind, dear, sweet, old general would like nothing better than to take care of me while the world burns. I am sure he wouldn't want anything in return. He wants to get Gwen out. Without me. I'm such a rubbish mom, she'd probably be better off, wouldn't she? If I were a really good mom, I'd make, her, I'd make the sacrifice. I can't give you up, Gwen. I'm sorry, I just can't. Oh god, I remember the babies after the war, before everyone got on joy and we stopped having them. They upset everyone so. I always wondered where they went after. No one talked about it. Usually the moms went with. Sometimes the baby was just suddenly gone. Sometimes they found the baby and the mom, later. 
I don't want to play house with the general. I want to vomit. Wait, the boat. There's a boat. He has a boat. I could steal it. Fix it up first, then steal it. Now I can go see Arthur again and give him a letter of transit, and he'll have the cod liver oil, and we can take the boat off this cursed archipelago. Well, I don't know how that will work out. So we have to go inside now and activate a hatch. So what I don't get is how are these um, guys outside plague wastrels all of a sudden? When we were Arthur, they were still normal, right? So how do we get in? Do we now have to sneak in through the back like we did with Arthur? Oh, I hope we have enough lockpicks. Oh no. Oops. Okay. Well then, let's run. So. There are a lot of patrols here. Oh wait, I'm there. Oh, we were going to go through here. Oh well, this gives me memories. I was so annoyed the last time when we were here. Yes, that's it. So I wonder, could we have accessed this as Arthur too? I'm not sure. Who drinks that much whiskey? So, this is it. Oh, money. Although I should keep should keep an eye on the weight we can carry. Okay, so that's okay. We're still good. So where's the hatch now? Is it here? Yes, it's here. Good. Now I can sneak... Oh, that crazy old pirate. He must know about boats. He can't be hard to find. He's always at the pub. Oh, so is the barmaid the one at the store? Yes. Okay, we know where that is. That's not far away. <clears throat> it's not far away from our track access hatch here. Why can't I? So this is... Yes, okay, so home that's how it works. Games. Indeed, home. Okay, so I'm glad that we didn't have to go through the whole um, camp again. I was fearing that we would have to enter again and sneak oh through it. God. That was annoying enough as Arthur. Me. Okay, so the curfew is not over. Um, I think I'm going to sleep for a few hours. So we're rested. Oh, and then we need to go home to Gwen. Okay. Going to the bar is on our way home, so I guess it shouldn't take too long. Why can't I catch the batter the butterfly butterflies? Why can't I catch the butterflies now? I don't get it. Uh, so we need to pass the headmistress now. It's funny how it spawns so late. So I guess Sally's story is coming to the finale soon as well. Although I don't really get how a pirate will help us steering a motorboat. Hello, Miss Boyle. Usual. Oh, I'm afraid I'm looking for someone. He's not here. He's he's just stepped out. Don't know when he'll be back. <laughs> Where's the pirate? 
Does he owe you money too? No, I want to talk with him about boats. He ran out looking for Eddie. The meat boy said he was on Wednesday's Hill. Eddie McMillan? What's he doing there? What do you get when you cross an elephant with a rhino? What? Elephino. Watch yourself out there. <laughs> the old name for that hill wasn't Wednesday. That's goddamn creepy. <laughs> okay, that was an interesting pun. Oops. So, where is this hill? Ah, it's there. Okay, that's not so far away. But first we're gonna go home and look after Gwen. So we know that Sally isn't leaving with Arthur, so I suppose she, in the end she will really leave by boat. Oh, we still don't, we don't have enough water again. This is like a real problem. I hope we have enough components to do a water filter again. Oh, we already had one. It's good to be prepared. Let's do another one. Don't wet when I'm changing you. I knew it. Oh, I need to craft it again. But I have the water now. So I hope that we will be okay with ten portions of milk. Because mm. I don't know. You're hungry, aren't you? I don't know what we should do if we run out of tinned milk again. How we steal some new records? Really? What's happening here? This is my last duct tape. I need to. That's better, isn't it? Are these some symptoms of, of Gwen being sick, or is this a bug? Because we just did that. Do we have to feed her again now, too? Okay, now it's okay. Once upon a time, there was a lady who lived in a lake. A powerful alchemist was in love with her, but she refused to be his. Not until he'd taught her all his secrets. The alchemist laughed and laughed and said, What does a pretty girl want with chemistry? And that made her angry. But he humored her, and he showed her his laboratory, and she amazed him with her learning. Her powers grew and grew, until one day she was as great a chemist as he was. Some even said greater. <laughs> he started to be afraid. Surely he'd know that she'd use his secrets against him someday. What he didn't foresee was that she'd leave him for the general. Oh, I'm rubbish at stories, aren't I? Mm-hmm. You probably shouldn't tell your own child of your, I don't know, escapades with various men of questionable character. That's a good story. That's a good title for an episode. Is this the Yam Hill? Or somewhere where we all should respect the Yam? Yeah, it is. So now we'll see what this is all about too. So, what about the yam? Hello there, Cap'n. They've taken him. Poor, poor Eddie. Who's taken Eddie? The cultists. Up on the hill. The yam people. It's not yams they worship. They're... It's too horrible. You have to stop them. They're gonna kill him. I wish I could do it. I'm too scared. Oh, God. I just... 
My legs have got all watery. No, I'm a coward, Miss Boyle. A coward. I'll do my best. Don't go anywhere. Save him, Miss Boyle. Please. <laughs> I just realized he has a... Oh no, he has a stuffed rat. He has a stuffed rat painted as a... as a parrot. <laughs> That's a little bit ugly. Oh, at first I thought it was a living rat that was just tamed, but this is a dead rat. That's, no, that's not funny at all. Ugh. What I just wanted to do was... No, because what I wanted to see is now we have the knockout juice. We have three of them available. So will this be in, autom will this be in syringe automatically? Oh, that's... Turn back now, or face the wrath of the yam. Well, if it's only the yam, then I think I'll be fine. Last chance to turn back. Did you read any of these signs? Mm, yeah, I did. his heart out. I don't think I want to fight all these vegetable worshippers. I wonder if there's a way I could drug them. Oh, look. They're drinking out of a chalice. Hear the words of the oh. old one. Please, no, don't kill me. No, I don't have more knockout juices. No. Said, Although if I drug three of them. The of the new moon. When I wear if I drag three of them, we should be okay too, right? Shall save in me! Some save me! Please! And adore me. Or we don't. And I will teach you things no. That are I guess I have to punch them. Well, we're not a fighter. But <sighs> Okay. Now I lost all my knockout juices to this guy. So this is the book of the yam. Anti Edmund. Okay. <laughs> thank you! Thank you! Thank you! They promised me sweets if I came along with them. But there weren't any, and they tied me up. You mustn't trust strangers, Eddie. I know. But I can trust you, can't I? You're good. And Arthur, he's good too. Percy always said so. Yeah. Arthur's bloody brilliant. Look, you wait here. I'll send someone to get you home. Why is his leg so weird too? Oh no, did they break his leg too? Oh. Sorry. Oh no, nope, I'm not gonna take this way down. <sighs> I'm sad about my knockout juice. Although I now s I gathered some histoplasm at the memorial camp, so I should be good to, to craft some more. You saved him! I wish I had! I love that lad! He's one of the best people I know. Yeah. He'll need you to carry him home. Listen, Captain, I need to fix up a Bristol pilot. The, uh, a general's. Oh, that's a beauty. I love that boat. Clean lines, beautiful woodwork. I was just reading about it. Could I... Could I borrow your book? Oh, sure. Here we go. Least I can do. After I didn't save Eddie, keep it. You'll need it more than I do. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I haven't been in a boat in 15 years. Say, you wouldn't happen to have a sovereign for a thirsty pirate, would you? I feel smarter about boats already. When is Arthur getting that cod liver oil? Maybe he's got it. Maybe he's already sent a note on the blower. How is he I'm supposed so close to, to our playground? 
Maybe I should just see if he's there and see how things are going. Yeah, just like I wanted to say, how is going? How is Arthur going to send you anything on the blower if he doesn't even know where you live? Or, but I don't know how the post system works here. Oh yeah, he's sitting there. Hey, Arthur. Hi. You're still in town. I got it. Your precious cod liver oil. Have you got my letter of transit then? Arthur, we're practically the only two people in this entire city not stoned out of our minds on joy. You look... rough. What do you care? How are you going to get out? Why won't you just give me the fucking letter of transit? Oh, it's always what you want, always what you need, every little Sally whim. Bloody cod liver oil. Am I really that awful? What? Just because you seduced my dad in my mum's bed while you were staying in our house? How was I supposed to tell him no? I'd never anywhere else to go. Um, sorry. Here. Let's go together. We're two musketeers. I'm scared, Arthur. Aren't you? <sighs> it's going crazy out there. We have to go now. Wait, wait. I have to go back to my place first. Why? And we sort of have to wait till dawn. Oh, God, no. There's something I have to tell you. No, th th that's crazy. I, I can't. Oh, you shouldn't have asked for that ridiculous cod liver oil. I've got a baby. It's just self-preservation, Sally. No hard feelings. Arthur? Arthur? Did he even hear me? Of course he heard you. He just didn't care. At least he brought the cod liver oil. At least that. I've got to get it to Gwen as fast as I can. Oh well, um, this showed again that, I don't know, in this arc, in Sally's act, smelly darkness into, well, not that much better. That Arthur was a jerk for leaving, so yeah, of course, but I guess at this point, I guess at this point Arthur didn't really, I don't know. I guess I wouldn't. I also wouldn't really know what to think about this if Sally, if, if Sally told me this in this situation because she had so many. Oh, oops, I'm wearing the wrong clothes again. Because she had so many chances where she could have been honest with him or just I don't know stated what her problem was. That she needed cod liver oil for for healthy for health reasons or anything. I I think I would. I don't know. Because it was Sally who was who started off like nothing had ever happened and they were still the closest of friends or whatever and then I don't know Arthur. Sally Boyle! Oh my god, who's that? Eddie McMillan's looking for you. He uh, wouldn't tell me what it was, but he seemed pretty well, pretty distressed. Even for Eddie. Alright, thanks. Maybe I should get down to the pub and see what he's worried about. Okay, um... I think I'm gonna cure Gwen first. Although it is on our way. I suppose nothing will happen. No, that's heartless. I'm going to cure my child first. I don't know. I don't even know what to think anymore because... Whatever we see... Or whoever we are, it's all different. <sighs> In Act One, it seemed like Sally was this—I don't know—scheming um, and 
nice girl who knows how to use her connections and her charm but now it's like it's not so sally has troubles sally has deeper troubles than just the memory of smelling cod liver oil for curing her child but i don't know i think that at this point arthur was so annoyed with just being sally's errand boy without knowing anything that i think it's still understandable that arthur said no i have to save myself first because i don't know i guess he just felt used by sally is perfectly horrid. I know. But it will help you fight those nasty measles. And that is everything. We're gonna see the world, darling. We're gonna leave this awful place and go wherever we want. Just as soon as you're feeling better. All right, I know a thing or two about the general's boat. Now I just need a boat motor. So, first our child needs food again. You still don't have water? I, didn't I use, didn't I just filter so much of it? Oh, wow. I hope Dr. Faraday can make me one I can carry. So wait a second, but Arthur, how are we gonna find Dr. Faraday? Arthur has already helped escape, helped her escape. Arthur is almost out. He's on his way to, to Appleholm right now. He has already, um, um, he's almost done. So Faraday is gone. How is, how is Sally going to find Faraday? I don't know. I even if even if the game is now um putting Arthur in the bad light or something like that. So yeah, of course. Arthur could have been more compassionate and uh, and helping Sally still or l at least listening to her now that she has a child or something. But on the other hand, I understand that I to give you gym when your teeth comes in. My mom always said she knew I'd go wrong because of the way I cried for Jim when I was a baby. Yes, darling. Mummy was precocious. <laughs> Someday, when you have teeth, you'll be able to eat Mummy's cooking. I know what you're thinking. But I'm a very good cook. Though my mum complained I never followed a recipe. I already heard this. I was always uh. inventing my own. All right. I did blow up one cake. I never heard the end of it, did I? Well, you and I will cook up such lovely meals when we're in the countryside. So, we have some more to read. Did he even hear me? Oh shit, oh fuck, did he even hear me? Of course he heard me, he just didn't care. What am I going to do? Everything I have to, I guess. At least he brought the oil, at least that. She's getting better. I can already tell, thank god. She's going to make it. I knew Arthur could do it. I just wish he didn't hate me so. I might figure this mum bit out after all. I don't know. I I have this feeling that... Sally's... If Sally or Arthur... I don't know, made a different approach to each other that maybe they could have figured it out? somehow so what i just saw is why is dr faraday's lab here how oh i don't know this is all so strange because it's like we're in parallel universes are we in parallel universes i don't think so right 
That would be mind-boggling, though. I mean, it really seems like it. Because we know Arthur and we know Sally, but they're like, it's like two different people in those two different acts. It's like, really, it is like a, really it's like parallel universes. I don't know. Anyway, the next time we're going to go see Dr. Faraday's lab, I'm really, ex I'm really interested in how this is going to play out. Because as I said, this is at a time where Arthur has already set free Dr. Faraday. But anyway, we're going to take a look at Dr. Faraday's lab in the city, and we're also going to go to this other guy that we just saved from the Yam cult, because um, he wanted something too. Anyway, that's what we're going to do in the next episode. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.